Welcome to the Register's Report. My name is John Buckley. I'm the Register of Deeds of Plymouth County, and this shows about Plymouth County real estate. Our headline for the month was Typical Winter Blues Hit the Real Estate Market for February. This show is being taped in March. However, we're going to talk about the February recordings at the Registry of Deeds. We have two great guests coming on. Uh, I have Sheila Farragher of Harbor One and Cammie McMorrow of Northeastern Savings talking about the upcoming Credit for Life Fair in Brockton when they have a program that high school students get to try to budget money and make uh, life choices in a uh, financial literacy training program. Uh, it's done elsewhere around the county also. And we're going to talk about some of our great Plymouth County history, particularly related to the month of March. So recording uh, activity at the registry for February, there are 538 deeds recorded in February, less than the 572 in January, just about the same as last February. But for the first two months of 2019, uh, sales of properties are down 11%. As far as mortgages are concerned, we had a little bump in mortgages um, because rates have been down. And although people always have used mortgages to purchase property, we had a little bit of an uptick, uptick in the refinance market, which has been slow. There are 1,145 mortgages recorded in February, more than the 1098 recorded in January. However, still down 16% compared to last February, and for the first two months in the year, down 16%. We still track foreclosure deeds and foreclosure notices, although they're dwindling um, from the crisis we had in 2008 going forward. There were 24 foreclosure deeds countywide in February, down from the 35 in January, 33% less than last February, and for the first two months in calendar year 19, 36% less. We, on foreclosure notices, the same story. Foreclosure notice is when a individual is finding themselves in difficulty, paying their loan, they get a warning notice from the bank. A foreclosure deed is when the lender is actually taken back the property. There were 41 foreclosure notices across the county in February, less than the 69 in January, 36% um, less over the, than, the, than the two months last year. You're also going to see a listing of foreclosure deeds and notices by community. There are 27 communities in Plymouth County, one city, 26 towns, and we track foreclosures and foreclosure notices for each one of those communities. Uh, we run a free training session on how to um, efficiently research our records. The next training session will be on Thursday. April 4th at 9 o'clock. We advise you to register in advance because there are eight hands-on computers for that uh, program. Uh, we have uh, keep your eye out for deed scams when people try to get you to pay more money for a copy of your deed. You can get it at one of our offices for a dollar a page. And in the next segment, I have Cami McMorrow of Northeastern Savings Bank and Sheila Farragher from Harbor One talking about the upcoming Credit for Life Fair in Brockton, similar to others that are run throughout Plymouth County. So we'll see you next segment. Welcome back to the Registers Report. My name is John Buckley. I'm the Register of Deeds of Plymouth County. In this show, we always try to do something educational. In nature, we've had surveyors, appraisers, many uh, people involved in the real estate business, commercial uh, lenders, and, and others. And this particular day, we have a couple great guests. We're going to talk about a very important issue that's facing real estate right now in the whole uh, country, and that is financial literacy. Uh, we went through a great uh, meltdown in 2008 of uh, people that took out too many loans. And when the economy crashed, a lot of people lost their home. It's become very important to teach people how to manage their money. And this particular program 
starts with our youth. Uh, they run in various high schools around Plymouth County in southeastern Massachusetts. And again, I have two great guests to talk about that. I have Cami McMorrow of the Northeast New Savings Bank. Welcome, Cami. Thank you for having me. And I have Sheila Farragher from Harbor One. Hi, thank you. And I've always called our friend Leo McNeil the father of financial literacy. But I'm glad to see all other yes. lenders have joined in along the way and participate. And you do a lot over in Bristol County. Yes. So do you want to just introduce yourself to our viewers? Can you tell them a little bit how you got into the business of, of banking? Sure. Um, so my name is Cami uh, McMorrow. I'm from Northeastern Savings Bank. Um, I actually manage the mortgage area, but I've, I've been with the bank about 18 years. Um, and I, when I started at the bank, uh, there was an opportunity to get involved at the Credit for Life Fair in Brockton. Um, and at the time, as you mentioned, Leo McNeil was kind of the, the founding father of the event. And um, he was great. And I got involved and I just loved it. Um, and one thing that I think Leo stressed, which was really important, was paying it forward and spreading it and making sure that other schools and other students were getting the same opportunities that they were providing in Brockton. Um, so with that, after going through several fairs uh, in Brockton, um, kind of packaged it up and presented it at a few other schools. And um, I think that it's kind of really caught fire and really taken off, which has been great. I think there's really a need for it. Um, and it's been a lot of fun, yeah. So it's a lot of work, but it's a lot right. of fun. Yeah. And it is worth the time and effort. And Sheila, a little bit, how do you get into banking? Yeah, so, yeah, so I've, I'm Sheila Farragher from Harbor One, and I have worked at Harbor One for just about 12 years. And when I started out, it was kind of a second career for me. My kids were young. I wanted to be closer to home. So um, I started out as a teller um, and then worked. Um, an opportunity came for Harbor One U opened up, and that's our education um, center. And we do a lot of financial education. We do a lot of small business um, outreach. And it's an opportunity. We do all of these classes for free. Um, and and again, so we in, we also do community outreach as well, um, and yeah, so we you know have, we're involved with you know the Brockton Credit for Life Fair. This is going to be the 19th year um, that we've put it on, and it's actually it's sponsored by the Brockton Housing Partnership. So there's a number of banks right. um, and no, not um, nonprofits that are involved in this effort, um, mm -hmm. but we um, kind of Cami and I have you know, just kind of been involved in the background, getting kind of all the, the booths and all of the volunteers and things like that um, off the ground, so. So, you know, we talk a lot about financial literacy in terms of home buyer courses that both, both banks right. participate in yeah. for people looking to buy a home and try to get them educated in the responsibilities and um, how you have to res have reserves and enough money to do what you want to do with your home. Uh, this is a little different. This is targeting a, a different audience. Uh, it's really going after high school students, and I think it's a tremendous thing. I've volunteered myself at a number of them over the years, but do you want to talk a little bit about um, how it works, and once the students arrive, they're giving a packet, and what they're charged to do. You want to start, Cami? Yeah, sure. Um... So each school runs it a little bit differently, yeah. but the idea is that it's a real life simulation. Um, so students are um, able to kind of research a profession that they might be interested in. They choose that and they're assigned a entry level income uh, or position in that, that field that they're interested in. Um, so they come to the fair with a, um, a budget and they have to navigate through the simulation where they make major purchases and spending um, in all the major categories. So they have to obtain housing, they have to get clothing and food, um, they have to go to the savings booth, there's a luxury booth. And the idea is just that they'll learn to balance a checkbook, which I'm sure you know many students don't really know what that is anymore, especially with electronic banking. Um, 
but they have to do that. They have to learn how to put money into their savings and retirement and think about that. They see what, what taxes come out of their income and the difference between gross and net income. Um, some schools will even assign their FICO scores according to their GPAs. Um, so the impact of that is very interesting because as they go to get transportation, it may affect their ability to get a loan or their rate. So they really kind of see, I think, a realistic view in a safe environment where they can learn. So if they're making those mistakes that they might really make going forward, it, it's in a safe area where they're not really affecting their credit score or, or their money. but. Um, Certainly they're able to kind of get an appreciation, I think, for what their parents are dealing with. And the idea is just to get them before they're making those mistakes. So, you know, these are students that are juniors and sometimes seniors. And so before they go off to school or make decisions about their future, they kind of have an idea as to what they're going to encounter um, going forward. So it's a lot of fun. I think it's fun for the volunteers and definitely for the students, very eye-opening. So I love the transition from, because they're on a limited budget and mm -hmm. assigned a, a particular uh, occupation, when they start by getting a luxury car, right. in a one bedroom apartment, and then all of a sudden they realize they have to budget their money and make some choices. Do you want to talk right. a little bit about sure. that? Sure, yes. There have been many times where you know, a student would say, oh yeah, I want to get the um, BMW and um, then they go around to all the other boots and realize that they've run out of money. So, um, you know, a lot of times that transportation booth is busy at the end with people trying to return um, the car. So, yeah, a lot of times they will get it stuck in their head. Oh, I want to live alone. And I, you know, no, I can't have, you know, three or four roommates. But the reality is based on their income um, that they may need to make so different I choices. Usually so. at the housing booth yes. mm -hmm. and they come to me and they all start with the one bedrooms you know the yeah. suites the most expensive one yeah. and then all of a sudden they're out there and they're wandering around talking to people meeting people some of whom they don't even know till they come to the fair and then all of a sudden they'll come back and say you know I found two other roommates I want to change my purchase and yeah. you have to list them all uh, on, on the form. It's pretty okay. incredible. The idea is just to get them thinking about their needs versus their wants um, and, and assessing what actually fits in their budget. And of course, I think every student thinks, when I graduate college, I'm going to be making $85,000 a year because I'm going to be in this. And they don't realize that there are, you actually have to work your way up to that. So um, I think it's, it's a lot of fun to see how they react to things. And, and Sheila's right, oftentimes they'll return vehicles and then they kind of realize, well, you drove the car off the lot, so you're not going to get the same value for it back. So, uh, so it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Do you want to just identify the different booths if you can as much as you? Oh, sure. Yeah. Yep. So it, Cammie had mentioned before yeah. that there's, you know, the housing, transportation, luxury. There's also insurance. insurance right. um, there's one that we call it That's Life, where a, there's a wheel that has things that they may not necessarily budget for, so things, but we have positive and negative things. Mm -hmm. So they could get a tax return, um, but they could have to um, go to their friend's wedding where they have to buy a gift and, um, you know, get a hotel room um, or they, a late payment and they have a, um, that late payment fee. And then there's also... Um, Savings and retirement, retirement. luxury, okay. um, safety and security, okay. we have one. So it, we, we, we try to teach them about, you know, don't put everything on social media like, right. oh, I'm going on vacation or, you know, try to, we want them to be secure with their things because there's so much identity theft out there that we just try to want to at least have that be um, right. an eye-opening experience. And then career counseling, I think, is an important one because we're teaching students about the importance of job interview skills and dressing for success and things like that. And, and they might need a part-time job, so they would go there for that. Yeah. Uh, there's an education booth. That's right. Um, so I, I think there are a lot of good booths. And what's fun about the credit fair is as you do them and you do them at other schools, they kind of evolve into their own thing. And because it can be customized, it's really nice. You can add booths. So we didn't always start out with a safety and security booth, but that's something that's kind of evolved over time. And we said, there's a need for this. So how can we address it in this simulation? Um, so I think as we go through this, there'll be another booth that will come up and we'll say, this is a good fit. Um, so it's nice because it really, it's different for every fair you do. 
um, at every school. Yeah. So and on, then, a, on a practical level, they, they were actually given a sheet of paper with a certain amount monthly, mm -hmm. and then they have to try to a budget, yeah, figure it out as they go. And sometimes they'll go back and change what they bought just to make it mm -hmm. spread around more. Right. Exactly. And at some um, fairs, like uh, some students might go straight for the luxury and they'll get the trip and the Red Sox tickets and things like that, where in some town people like, the, I'll say, oh, you, luxury, there's no line. And they say, oh, no, I want to wait till the end because I, you know what I mean, to see if I have money left over. So every, you know, student is different. Um, well, I think the more we do it, the more there's chatter about it. So the seniors might be talking to the juniors or the sophomores and saying, don't go to luxury and spend all your money. That's where I blew my money. So it's it's kind of interesting. I think they get smarter as, as it goes on. So we yeah. have to kind of always be thinking ahead, like, how are we going to handle this? Um, so yeah, it's, it's some of them approach it like it's a game um, right. and they have to win. But it, it, either way, if they take one thing away from it, you just hope that they remember one thing and take that going forward and learn from it. So whether it's the importance of a credit score, the importance of investing in 401k early, um, the importance of really paying attention to the needs versus wants. You know, can I budget for a, a one bedroom apartment or do I have to look at a roommate? And, and that's all you want is for them to take something away. Right. And we, we've gotten some feedback in past years. So the state treasurer, um, we apply for a grant through the state treasurer's office, yeah. and um, they require a survey. And some of, one of the years, we actually we had to like tally them all. Now I think they, they do it online. But one of the um, comments was, um, one of the students said, don't go broke trying to look rich. And we're just like, oh, okay, all right, you know, they're getting it, you know, and it's, um, you know, they're yeah. smarter than, than they think. think. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so they really are. Yeah. Um, I feel like Leo always said, um, his, his famous quote was, if you don't have a plan for your money, someone else will. And I feel like it's something that I've remembered from the first fair I did because he always said it to the students and I thought that makes so much sense. Have a plan for your own money because when you get out there, someone else is going to want to spend it for you. So you hope that they remember that. Yeah. So what year is this for the Brockton Fair? 19th, 19th year. 19th year, that's yeah. incredible. Yeah. And I think it's the longest running one. Yeah. In the country, yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, I remember when it started. Uh, and it, what, a, what a great idea it was. And it's been picked up by other communities as they've become aware of it. You mentioned it. There are a few you're doing out in your area? Yeah, we just had um, Easton's Credit for Life Fair, so we serviced uh, 275 juniors okay. um, at Stonehill. And then we have another one coming up um, in April for Attleboro and um, uh, Norton High School, and that's 600 students. Okay. We had Foxborough High School in February. Um, North Attleboro had theirs last year for you know uh, their entire junior class. But it's definitely, I think, just taken off. And, and the more that schools see it, they see value to it. It's important. It's a great way to connect, I think, the community to the students. Um, and also, it's a, it's a good way to get financial literacy rather than lecturing students to really interact with them. You know, I think, I think they enjoy yeah. it. And a lot of times you could have a student that you, you can kind of see they might be struggling with their like oh what's going on here and you can you know just have that kind of one-on-one -on -one with them and mm -hmm. and just kind of say like all right well you know given some of the choices that you made you know maybe you need to get a part-time job or mm -hmm. some of these things so and I know you do them in Whitman and I did one in Rockland yeah you've done others so the we did too. Rockland and Sharon okay. High School in the fall yeah. we have Bridgewater Raynham coming up right. the end of this month okay. um, and then Blue Hills Regional is going to actually do their first one in April so. I think it's, yeah. so it's a great thing you know right actually Rentham High School ran their first fair this year and it was run by students oh, wow. two seniors that were part of their DECA program um, saw it, wanted it, and thought it was a great idea, and so they did it from a student perspective, which I think is very uh, interesting as well. Yeah. So, um. I, I don't think a lot of people appreciate how much the local lenders really get involved in their community, and I know that when the day comes, there's a lot of people from the different 
lenders mm -hmm. that are there that have done it multiple years in the past. And it's a, it's a fun thing to do. I know it's work for you guys. Right. But it's for the people work. who just go for one day, it's right. a lot of fun. And I know there still is a reach out to try to get some more volunteers. So people watching here, uh, this show as it goes around, how would they contact uh, you? Could you both share your contact information? Oh, sure. Um, so that we could send it to, um, there's, we have an info box, info at harbor1u.com. Okay. Um, or they could reach out to um, us at 508-895-1300. And Kami? Um, my direct email is best. It's kmcmorrow at northeastonsavingsbank.com. Um, or my direct line is 508-297-8028. And because of safety concerns, there is a quarry check. That's a very simple document to fill out. And the quarry is done in the Brockton High School one by the mm -hmm. school department. Yes. And that um, meets all the requirements of uh, people being able to do the program. And uh, lunch is provided. And it's, yeah. it's, it, no, it's a good chance to... Yeah. To, to see the kids in action and also meet other people that are like-minded in what they, what they do. Right, exactly. And that's one of the nice things. There are so many different banks and yeah. nonprofits that are part of it. Right. And, you know, we might be competitors in the real world, but on that day we're all working together um, to right. try to, as you said, pay it forward yeah. and try to... And if you're not able to join us this year, it's important to keep it in mind for years going forward because this is something that we hope will be sustainable, will be around. Obviously, it's been around in Brockton for 19 years. Um, so it's definitely something that we'll be doing going forward. And to put something like this on, I think Brockton, we're servicing about 600 students or so right. this year, which is huge. Um, so it takes you know about 80 volunteers, if not more, and there's always room for more. So anybody that wants to, to join, reach out to Harbor One or Northeastern Savings Bank. So anyone watching this show, um, there are opportunities uh, in your community if you live in Whitman or Hanson yeah. or Rockland or others that are around. And right. if they don't do one, I think I'd talk to your uh, school superintendent or principal right. of high school and tell them what you saw and how important it would be for their community. There's videos on it on YouTube, so if you're interested and you want to see a visual, if you put in Credit for Life Fair, there's hundreds of them. Perfect. That's good to know. Good yeah. way to see what it's all about. Great. Well, thank you for joining me. All right. Thank all right. you, nice John. Nice to see you. Yeah, nice thank to see you. Thank you very Kate. much. Thanks for coming on. No problem. Thank you. Welcome back to the Register Report. My name is John Buckley. In this segment of the show, we always do something lighter in nature, some of our history in Plymouth County, but I first want to thank Sheila Farragher and Kami McMorrow for the great job they did in describing Credit for Life uh, for their importance as well as how they operate. And it's just a great uh, opportunity that our local banks have undertaken in the case of the Brockton Fair for 19 years and others more recently, uh, how to help young individuals, particularly at the high school level, to understand the choices you have to make with your income uh, in the various requirements to fund it. Uh, in the holidays in March, consist of the Mardi Gras, Fat Tuesday was Tuesday, uh, March 5th. Ash Wednesday was the 6th. Daylight savings time, the spring ahead clock started on the 10th. Uh, St. Patrick's Day will be coming up on the 17th. The spring equinox, which is when winter ends and spring begins, also known as the vernal equinox is the 20th of March. And we're going to talk about some of our notable records, some of our history that relate to the month of March, uh, starting with the Strand Theater. Every year, the Brockton firefighters run a program at City Hall highlighting and honoring the firefighters who died in that tragic 1941 fire. There were 13 Firefighters killed, still the third highest loss of life for firefighters in history across the country. Um, there was a theater over on the corner of Main Street and School Street. Uh, when a, the fire started, the, the, the firefighters rushed in 
to put out the fire, as they always do. Um, and they um, got caught under a roof that collapsed. And it is a continuing reminder of the potential dangers that firefighters face every day and how much we owe to our first responders across our communities. Uh, there's a memorial on City Hall Plaza, the Strand Theater Firefighters Memorial Monument, dedicated in 2008, adjacent to the former Strand Theater. And it's a wonderful event in honoring, again, honoring our first responders held every year. If you have a chance to ever get there, I advise you to take advantage of that. Um, clearly, the month of March is St. Patrick's Month for Plymouth County. Plymouth County and Norfolk County have the highest number of individuals with Irish descent in all of America. Uh, there was a very famous person named John Boyle O'Reilly who, who settled in his summer home in Hull. He had been in Ireland, joined the British um, Army, was kicked out because he was trying to help the uh, island become one nation again, S convicted it of, and sentenced to life, uh, to a uh, life imprisonment, and then off to Australia, came up to Boston, became a very famous Irish poet, became the editor of the pilot, the Catholic uh, Church's um, newspaper. He purchased a home in Hull in 1880 for a summer house, and he rebuilt that house, and that property is now the Hull Public Library. He's a very important figure in Irish history in, as they tried to assimilate with the Protestant Yankees citizenry in the 19th century. And uh, he died in Hull in 1890, but there's a monument in his honor uh, in the Fenway section of Boston. Another famous Irish person, an Irish woman, uh, Senator Anna Buckley, who lived in Brockton uh, at a time when women really weren't successful or even interested in running for office. She became a state senator from Brockton, served for many years, um, lived in Ward II, and served in the Women Army Corps during World War II. Uh, she went to work for uh, Frank Bellotti as when he was an attorney general, and then state auditor Thaddeus Butchko, and sought election on her own, got elected to the city council. One year later, she was elected to the state senate. She held that position for 16 years, rose to vice chairman of the Ways and Means Committee, and um, was a major contributor to political life in Plymouth County. And Massasoit has a fine arts building named after her. Um, we also like to talk about one of our colonial records. There's one here that we're showing, both the handwritten in the Trim's Kitchen. Uh, many people would come over because they couldn't afford the passage as indentured servants. Uh, they would be paid for their passage. They would have a roof over their head. They would provide um, food and drink and uh, any all of the things they needed to live, they would usually work from four to seven years, and then they would be a free citizen. In this particular document, a, it, was a, it was a transfer of the um, contract from one person to the other uh, in the, under the, with the assent of the indentured servant at the time, kind of a unique uh, transaction at the time. I want to thank uh, Brockton Cable Access. This is my 101st show. We do one every month. We celebrated our 100th anniversary of the show last month. Lorna Green Baker from my office and Christine Richards helped me put the show together. Aaron T. Bold and Phil Philippides uh, helped me cover the show today. And you allow me to share information to people about their most valuable asset. So happy St. Patrick's Day. We'll see you next month.